good luck. Here we are celebrating week 100 of the Shogi Teaching Ladder. Uh, each week we strive to teach and learn something new. Here we are um, commemorating the occasion, playing the opening we first started with on this server. And we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, this morning on uh, Shogi Harbor's channel, we were just starting to study these lines having to do with uh, Temple Loss Bishop Exchange. Um, and while I don't really intend to go there, it's a possibility. Okay, but we're not going there right now, nor do we need to. Um, and I recently studied some of my other recent games in post-game analysis with Geekko, and it recommends this move order, which is a bit flexible in case I decide to bring the silver out this way or out through the center. If I push this pawn directly, they can push this, and we have an immediate tension. It's more than I bargained for here. Um, so... Alternatively, if I push here, I mean, this is just really typical stuff here. So yeah, let's advance on the bishop's head. Um, <laughs> thankfully, once the silver gets out of the way, there's not some fork dropping a piece here. Um, but yeah, they defend their bishop, as is appropriate. We bring up the silver, and this bishop's now defended. And even if they exchange bishops, I have a silver recapturing, and it's all defended. That's all well and good, but also we're aiming at the head of this bishop. But uh, I shouldn't forget to castle either. So many competing priorities here. I'm usually on the other side of this position. Um... So let me spend one tempo bringing the king over. So I, if something goes horribly wrong, it's I still survive it. Let me spend one tempo asking them what castle they're going to build, and if they're going to like commit hardcore into diving into the corner, which they are not. Then that's a different story. Um, I could complete this boat. Um, hmm. Completing the boat makes some sense. But their objective in this opening is to get these rooks exchanged. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do. Other than not exchange these rooks. The bishop exchange tends to favor this side, but I don't have an immediate way to aim for it. I could bring the silver up, but that might be premature. Pushing this in general is a good thing. Uh, so this is called the Ibisha attacks for static rook that avoids various tactics when this bishop gets out of hand. But this might be mistimed. Okay, they are building Mino Castle. I might also build Mino Castle. Do I move the silver up and the king down? It looks sensible. I could alternatively put my king on the head of this a little further away. That somehow looks safer here. Okay, so we're going to probably bring the king up and play... I think this is Bald Mino? I'm not sure. Uh, alternatively, we just play Boat Castle with the king right next to the bishop. I don't know. But regardless, what I need to avoid is giving them a dragon for no reason. Um, so.
So let's complete this. Our golds protect each other. If this file breaks open and the drag or rook gets all the way back here, it does promote. I'd rather not see that, but I'm not sure how to time my attack because I don't play this every game. It's been a while since on Shogi Harbor's channel we did a book reading about fourth file rook strategy and explaining like what to do and what not to do. Um, so bringing up the silver is thematic here. If I move it through the center, that looks too dangerous. Um, I think this is thematic. I think I've not messed up just yet. This generally inspires um, pawn 1-4 so that I can't bring the silver up and force the pawn through. Um, but also I'm threatening the hit, head of the bishop. Oh, and bringing the rook over to hit this on its head. Um, so yeah. Actually, like, how did they do anything about this? If I move the rook over... Um... How do they stop me? They don't stop me. They they fall back and move the issue, issue point. Ah, I misspeak. But yeah, by retreating... I don't know, I've been on the receiving side of this position and it's not pleasant. So yeah, if they push this edge pawn, I could bring the rook over and try to break this. If they don't push this edge pawn, I've done this before. It's only effective if the rook actually gets to promote, I think. There's almost always tactics that like defy this idea. It just, in practice, has not worked out. And I've tried many times to make it work, and it's just maybe not a workable idea. Um, so if I exchange here, if I drop there, I'm threatening the lance, threatening to promote, hit the rook. They're threatening to strike here. Do I need to oppose rooks here? Is that the point? Um, I forget how this all works, <laughs> which is a bit embarrassing. So if I exchange, knight takes, I don't know. Hmm. Wait, if I exchange, silver takes, bishop drop doesn't do squat. Um, if I push this pawn, a pawn takes, if I push this pawn next, we exchange here, they drop somewhere, I have to move the rook, still threatening this pawn, or this point. They keep trying to break through. I forgot to play pawn 2-4. That's why this is a mess. Although that's not it. That's not all of it. There's more. Um, is there a line where the silver retreats? 
If there is a line, this must be it. This rook somehow is breaking through. That just... how does that happen? How have I failed? <laughs> I don't understand. I've been too slow. I needed to attack faster. Okay. So what now? I don't understand. If I push here... Something's... Oh, I'm supposed to bring up the silver to stop this from happening. That's what I messed up. Okay, that's why this position's so difficult. Okay, I get it now. Interesting. That's why all these things are working that normally don't work. So now we're off the wild blue yonder. Um, Now maybe I'm threatening pawn 2-4 in earnest. And if we exchange, and if the bishop takes, silver takes, I, well, no, I still don't have a drop back here. So, yeah, this is a mess. That's what this is. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Okay, we're going to castle this way then. The king steps up. And then later we can move the silver if we really want to. We might not want to. I don't know. 
Moving the silver there seems a bit provocative. On the other hand, I don't see a problem moving it. Like, they can't promote if their bishop invades. Um, yes, yeah, so let me try this. I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat, but uh, I need to know. Like, this is playable, right? Meanwhile, I can't assume it's going to be easy for them to do useful stuff. Um, I don't know. It's the Grand Stalemate. Now this knight's head is a weakness. If I could just get a pawn in hand. And I'm pretty sure I can. Um... Okay, so let's push on this edge. This does prevent my silver from moving to the edge. But given my earlier screw-ups, the silver is just not going there. It might go other places, but not there. Um, I can start considering trying to break on the fourth file. I don't want a rook exchange, though, so, like, what am I doing there? But they are denying my attacks elsewhere, and I don't know what else to do. I could move the lance up in the event that something goes to heck. Um, that at least I don't lose the lance but the lance becomes less effective the further you move it up the board. So that could be sketchy. Um, yeah, I don't want to attack from my castle anyway. Pushing the spawn would be dangerous, perhaps even reckless. So... Well, I've... no, the edge is not a great place for my rook to reside, but I could also move the rook onto the file where the bishop's at, prepare to break this open in a hurry, and hope that it works out. That might not be my wor worst idea ever. Ah, uh, that's a move. That is a move. Um, wonder what the next move's going to be. Well, you've got my curiosity, I'll tell you that. Okay. Oh, I walked into a fork. It's not the world's worst fork ever, 
Um, but yeah, they can actually exchange bishops and then exchange the bishop for a rook. The whole point of this opening is for them to get a rook promoted. Um, I have the board, and I just gave them what they wanted. Um, because I was anxious. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll see if they observe it. Um, mm -hmm, they see it. But I get a lance, so it's not all for naught. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... All right, well, we'll see how this plays out. We're attacking toward the king, and we're attacking the lance over here. We're still protecting the rook. Um, if they take the rook, maybe I just take the lance. No, I'm not also threatening the knight. Never mind. If I could take the lance and the knight for a rook, maybe in some universe that might be worth it. But no. So, yeah, we'll see whether or not they commit super hard to this, or if they repeat the tactic with my pawn hanging here. In which case, I might just give them the pawn so I could celebrate having my bishop in hand. Or... I could repeat the tactic, but with more initiative the second time around. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take here to try to not lose all our material. That's not a perfect move. Um, I don't understand. Um, sure, ostensibly the point of this opening is to promote a rook. Um, Well, I like a bit of adventure. Let's have a bit of adventure. So we commit my bishop to the board in order to promote it and start attacking everything. Yes, this does introduce a weakness, but, you know, we've got weaknesses already. Earlier, I might have expected them to like, attack these pieces here. And I still have this idea. I still have other promotion ideas, but... Um, I'm curious how they'll react. Okay. I'm fine with us exchanging castles, if you are. Um, if I take... I don't even have to take the rook, though. If I take the rook, if they take my gold, if I take a gold, they take my gold, I take a gold. Um, they take back, I take a lance. Well, no, they have a bishop in this case. That's a bit dangerous. Um, if I move my gold over, what I was concerned about is this promo- uh, not a promotion, but it's getting close. All right, so if I take this, if they take my gold, if I start running, they take my bishop. I don't have forks. Hmm. Um, annoying. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I take, take. 
Um, take again. They take my gold. I take here. They block with the gold. I maybe take that. No, I have other ideas here. Takes, I take here. They take a second gold. They, they don't have a bishop at that point. All right, we're going to take here. My bishop is doing nothing if it's in the corner. I have to take this way. Mm -hmm. This is a hard decision, I think. Um... I could be wrong. They have a gold general in hand. No, there's too much going on here. It looks like this is my choice, but no. I think they have to take... Well, silver protects the gold, so I shouldn't do any dumb sacrifices on the other side. That's not right. I'm pretty sure I survived their attack.
it would help if I read some more variations, but um doing what I can. Hmm. Yeah, there are many problems in my position. Perhaps I've been overconfident. That wasn't on my candidate move list. Because that gives me time to escape. This can't be correct. If they take my pawn, I've got two pawns in hand, I can start dropping them close to their king. I don't think they'd appreciate that. I can also consider dropping a pawn right next to my king. I don't know how the tactics work there. What? Excuse me? What's the notion here? They want me to surround my own king. Okay. Is that the only notion? It's not a terrible idea, but in practice, does it work? I don't know what to do. I panic. Panicking is an option, it's just generally not a good one. So, it's going to take me some time to get my generals rearranged. But next up is dropping my rook back here since I don't have any other piece to drop. I mean, yeah, it's painful, but um, I can build a castle again.
40秒。If my king goes back to defend it, like, the defense does not hold forever. I get that the silver is hanging out here the whole time. They could still exchange rooks and do this fork and collect the silver, and I don't care about that silver. Maybe I should care, but there's so many other fish to fry here. Um... I'm just trying to make sure my king doesn't get surrounded. So that's why I'm playing this extremely cautious set of moves that might be very overly cautious. Um, so after I take, they could still exchange here before doing that, or instead of doing that, Still trying to evaluate like what attacking possibilities I have. I can take this and then come back. Um, that's about it. Without having another general in hand, which I thought I had and I don't, this is going to be quite difficult. Alright, so... My grand idea was that if they check me along the rank, that I again could block, I guess, with a pawn out here. And I've made an extremely wide castle. Um, and that somehow that'd be good for me. Oh. They're not doing this fork. <sighs> All right. Um, so if I drop a pawn here. We can exchange, and they continue dropping pawns, and I just never escape this. Um, Okay. I don't see a checkmate. For the last five minutes I've been looking and I don't see how they mate me here. If I get mated, I get mated, but I just don't see it here. Um... Sanju Sanju, 
Okay, I play the forced move. I suppose if they had another general on hand, they could try tricky stuff, but, um, and that seems to indicate I should continue running rather than sit on my laurels here. Thank Okay, a run, away I run. <laughs> like the coward I am. <laughs> there I go. Oh my goodness. That is extremely brave. Um, that's the most positive word I can use for that. Because... That is also extraordinarily dangerous, what they're doing. Um. I don't think they understand just how dangerous that is. Oh, I see. They're cutting off this defense. Okay, so I have to... They're going to take this knight anyway. The point is that my knight is no longer defended. That's why they push this pawn. Yeah, I have counterattacks through here, but it's really not worth it. Um, I mean, I'm still correct about how dangerous that is. I just don't know what to do next. Here we go. This is faster than my pawn, and faster than my rook. The rook might be more stable, but if I were to sack the rook and the lance and the pawn, that might be my best way, but that gets complicated in a hurry, and I couldn't figure it out. So we're going this way.
40秒50秒12345678うん、that's supposed to scare me. It's working. Okay, if you've got mate, you earned it, but that's a big if. Uh, so they're threatening a drop here and then to take my gold. That's what they're threatening. I finally see what they're threatening. That took me a second. I almost walked into mate. Alright, so what do we do? <laughs> do we drop here? Like, what the heck? Silver takes us forced. No, that doesn't work. I'm sorry. No, silver takes was forced, and then I'm not sure where we go next. Sorry that this is anticlimactic. I was considering, does my king need to run out this way if they do something? But no, that doesn't... S maybe. Maybe that's the answer. If they had done silver takes, maybe I, my king runs and takes this knight and continues running a lot. Thanks for the game. Good game. Teaching ladder games are tough. It's a great opportunity for everybody to learn. Myself included. Myself especially. Alright. Um, so yeah, after we complete the teaching ladder game... Yeah, I was wondering, do I do like this, or do I do like this, or... I don't know, man. This is complicated. I've got stuff I can do, and then I can take here, go here, right? Uh, well, it's a mess. Maybe... I'd have to take here first, but... <laughs> yeah, alright. So when we do analysis, we usually... Hidechi recommends... Oh, sure. Cool. Even better. So yeah, we can use the full board here. I know this is a little more work for Gaston. Um, but yes, if we could do the post-game analysis from the starting position, that would be delightful. Um, so, whether... I don't know what your computer setup is. I don't know like if you have one monitor, two monitors, however you show stuff. Oh, I've got the hat now, so I can drive. Cool. Welcome, Gaston. That was a really challenging game for both of us, and yeah, I'd be glad to go through it together. Uh, so, yeah, I, in commemoration of our 100th week of this Shogi teaching ladder, decide to play uh, Static Rook. So that's the opening I played when I first joined 81 Dojo and started playing rated games on here. Yes, there was a brief period of time where game after game, I would end up losing my bishop's head. 
And like eventually after I figured out how to defend the bishop, I would end up losing the rook every game. And it was it was a fun ride all the way down to 9q. But yeah, I started with uh, Ibisha. Yes. Um, then I switched to playing opposing rook or swinging rook. And, um, you know, things got complicated. And somehow whatever complications resulted uh, suited my sensibilities decently. Um, but yeah, I started uh, with playing Static Rook because that's what the majority of players play and I was trying to imitate it and just figured out there was just too much for me to grasp all at once here. Um, yes, yeah, so Lily points out... okay. Oh wow. So like, yeah, Melkor and Lily are pointing out all this stuff. Okay, so these are... ah! Oh, that's the move order. Okay. Um, when I'm doing all that, should I be should I defer silver four eight until later? Well, I don't remember. I forget if silver four eight is good or bad. Um it certainly makes things complicated, but I see it played a lot. I apologize. Let me see, there's been a fair deal of comments here that have been missed. But yeah, I'm going to go back to looking at the Twitch live stream here. Um, oh, did you want to play when I play against you, our last teaching letter game? Because if so, you didn't play it correctly. I'm sorry. 3-6 pawn was early. Okay, I'm going to go back to looking at things on Twitch. 3-6 pawn was early here. Um, so, yeah, I can play my king out and over. Play this king out, this silver out through the center, complete the boat. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's this silver that joins that attack. And if I time things poorly, yeah, this is going to break. Well, I could, yeah. Fourth file rook is going to break open the fourth file at some point. At some point, I should sacrifice the two poor pawn like we studied on the book stream. But... <laughs> And we've been all through all this on our uh, Shogi Harbor teaching us, I forget if it's Thursday morning or something, or one of these various times where we studied openings together. Um, she did explain the intricacies of this. I think also on Saturdays we've done some opening learning. I just don't remember everything. Okay, depending on the strategy, you could use one or both silvers. Like, there's this super high-speed silver something or other. Yeah, I need to study this better. I didn't play it right. And it took me a while into this game to recognize. Um, so I did get my king in a good space. And then I complete the boat. But, like, I've forgotten uh, to play the... Oops, not that. Forgotten to play this and the silver up and then complete the boat in some order. That's one way to play it. And then the bishop can drop back and join this attack. Or if they open the diagonal, usually I think it benefits me to exchange the bishops. Um, and yeah, okay, but thanks, Ghostone. I think that makes sense. Um, so I'll keep advancing here. I'm not sure, uh, so I guess you're probably watching through Twitch, uh, I'm not, it would be difficult for you to chat in Twitch and drive on this website, but like, is there a place you would like me to go to in this game? Because um, I know we were both curious about these bishop exchanges, unless you happen to know like how that resolves and I was just curious about it. Um, but let's see, when this first opened, I figured that this was far too dangerous to open or exchange like this. But I've seen this before, I've even studied it before, and I've since forgotten it. Um, I think in general, Geeko usually recommends this silver recapture. Um, and I think it's roughly equal. I don't remember the rest of it. Um, okay, I'm going to resize the board again. Forgive me, folks are watching this. 
Endgame was a bigger miss, and Lily's saying it depends on the setup. Three six too early. Preferable is five six pawn. Okay. Uh, generally, Melkor says we use the left silver. Lily says for a rapid game with Elmo, um, the right silver is better than with the left silver. So rapid with Elmo is an option. Um, Melkor enjoys playing boat with the left silver more. I should exchange bishops if I have a chance to, and ghost stone likewise. Yeah, these openings are complicated. Um, I'll move on past the opening, because, uh, yeah, as fun as it is, we're eventually going to get the hang of this. But, yeah, this move was cowardly, but I was scared. And this allows you to just continuously build up all these things. And, I mean, they're saying if you get the chance to exchange bishops, you should exchange bishops. And uh, I guess there's merit to that notion here. Um, so I've managed to block the fourth file so that there's not going to be a promotion right away. Um, it's been so long since I played fourth file rook. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. You, but you do get the ability to push these things. And if, I mean, you're probably not wanting to build Hymeno here. But, yeah, there's things that can be done. I'm just not sure what they are, because I haven't played fourth file rook in about a year. Um... But anyway, I proceed slowly, and I build up, I think this is Bald Mino with uh, my king in front of this. No, Bald Mino is when I'm missing the pawn. This is some kind of Mino with the king at the head. Uh, I don't recall the name of it. But yeah, here, uh, probably on many occasions, we should be exchanging these silvers. Um, or bishops, so, like, if I do this here, I, oh, oh, that is cool, wow, so yeah, I could bring my king out and the silver to defend this edge, and the edge doesn't break, I've only once seen that before, okay, so yeah, in the event that this diagonal were still closed, and there weren't any tactical considerations to prevent that, that would be a great idea. So Milkor suggests I close the diagonal, or exchange and then close this, and enjoy my position. Because uh, eventually I'm going to break through on this edge somehow. Because like I've been on the receiving side of playing fourth file rook, for a long time, and it's very difficult to prevent this rook from, um, in this case, my rook, from breaking in over here. So yeah, the bishop exchange actually seems like a very good idea. During the game, I was freaking out about it, but no, it's more of a problem for my opponent than it is a problem for me. Yeah, okay, that's well said. Um... So we did ultimately exchange bishops, or rather, yeah, we did that, and then you took my rook. Yes. Yeah, this I thought was going to happen. And I was freaking out. I was not a happy camper about this. Because um, I have three pieces hanging, and I don't have much of an initiative here. So, like, maybe somehow I can make some tactical justification, but it doesn't seem likely. Oh, this is Tower Mino with my king in front like that. Okay. Oh, Yananaga's king. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're... F yes. So, yeah, I can bring this, bring my bishop back, drop a lance here recollect a little bit of material. Um, 
I guess they don't get to take all three pieces, do they? So that's an interesting point. So if I had taken here, they take here. I come back, they defend this. Um, and so now I've defended the lance. My silver is still hanging. But also, like, I'm not sure if this is a terrible idea. Maybe it is, because it blocks my horse. Um, I don't know. This can, looks confusing to me. Um, maybe there's some tricks somewhere, too. Okay, so we take like this. Um, and then try to break on this side already. Interesting point, Sylvie. Um, I'm not being sarcastic. I, I mean it. So, yeah, my castle is vulnerable from the head. <sighs> they have a dragon. I've protected my silver. The lance isn't worth taking, so that's why they attack over here. Um... They have one heck of a castle that's not easy for me to break. And not a lot of weak points. So, yeah. This pawn advance looks complicated. Yeah, I think you're right. Yonanaga's king is when you move the king to the edge and the silver supports the edge so it doesn't break. I think that's correct. So, this is sharp. Um, well, let me see what a few more comments were over here. Again, I'm trying to make this presentable, but this would have been bad for me. They'd take the silver first. Silver's a playing piece over... Yeah, this is just... This isn't immediately doing anything, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, it could be crushing from a glance. Silver can't help in defense or in the attack right now. Yeah. Yeah, I like this idea of attacking on this side here. Um, let me back up a bit. So, again, that's if I get greedy and try to win a rook, and then I, like, realize I can't drop the rook anywhere, so what did I bother with that for? But what else am I going to use a lance for? I don't know. Maybe there is some good use for a lance, and I shouldn't bother spending time doing this. Um, alternatively, like, rook takes might not be forced. Um, yeah, anyway, this is complicated. Engine san will tell us someday what to do. Yeah, yeah, Lance down here would be better placed to, like, really... If they even get two dragons, I'd be much better suited to fight against that. This horse retreat? Sure, I could see that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Engine san will tell us, like, what is the perfect move here is. But I think, yeah, taking the Lance there is much stronger than it looked at first, or at least looked poor to me during the game, but I think I survived this. I was still stunned this didn't happen. Um, so instead this pawn tries to open up the fourth file, and that gives me a tempo. So I immediately strike. I think this is a good break. I was not fully confident about my bishop 3-1 idea. Not at all, really. Um, so I exchange, we take, we take, take. Uh, Lily says I should take the gold. Let me back up one. So, what is going on here? Um, lots of things are going on. This is a sharp position. So, um, 
Yeah, meanwhile, like, yeah, this is what I'm looking at. I'm with Lily here. The issue, I think, with my idea and with Lily's idea right now is that, um, well, I'm sorry, this horse is still hanging. So there's not enough time to get the horse out of peril and also save the gold. So this is a double attack, maybe even a triple attack, depending how you count it. Um, so if we try to, like, save the castle, we end up losing the horse. I don't want to lose the horse. So I think a clever rejoinder. Yeah, Lily and I are on the same page here. And, like, after I'd moved during the game, I'd started looking at this kind of stuff. I didn't have much time on my clock anyway. Yeah, Melkor points out and I... Oh! Oh, this little pawn drop is cool. I didn't see that. Holy moly. Okay, so that might make my rook drop not so smart. Um... Well... This is sharp. So now... This protects the knight, and the silver is hanging, but the rook's not attacking. Yeah, so we can take here. I've given away a gold for this. Um, and then we take here. Oh, I'm sorry. Lily points out, yeah, that my intended continuation was to take here, but that's not so smart. Yeah, okay. Yes, I can't... Um, so this token moving toward the castle is a problem. Doesn't mean it's not a solvable problem. So, yeah. The horse supports the silver back here, shuts out that. Ah! Ah, ah, ah! Yes, yes, exactly. Very good points. Um, okay, so my attempts at buffoonery do not work here. Darn. <laughs> Alright, so I can't just play the most psychotically aggressive thing here. I have to actually like plan ahead. Um, so, does that mean that rook 3-1 is not good? Uh, probably. So where does that leave us? I don't know. Um, yeah, I couldn't figure all that out during the game. So, yeah, rook to rock 2-8 I think is complicated. And it's not as if, like, my moving the bishop here changes that analysis, because then the rook could just move along the rank. So, yeah, this is a mess. I probably have to sacrifice the horse at this point to save my castle. And as for whether this is better or worse than the game, I don't know. But this is probably the way I would have played it. In the game, we had, an, I think, what is an equally good move, which is uh, Tokin takes gold. Um... The problem here is that I win one tempo. Uh, I, again, expected uh, this drop here. Or would have played something like this. But in this case, since the horse is already here, uh, and since there's this like intervening square, it makes sense to get on this side of the horse. Um, okay, Melkor suggests this drop instead. He's probably right, isn't he? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Okay. Huh. Um. Well, what do I think about this? I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's that threat. So we have ways to address threats. Okay, now these threats get 
increasingly serious. Like, if I do something like this to try to save the castle, I think um, this doesn't completely save my king. I think there's some way to continue these threats. Um, I'm not sure. Well, no, this gets a silver. The extra general helps their attack. Never mind. So that doesn't actually stop anything. Um, yeah. So sacrificing a silver gives them another attacking piece, which is the last thing we need to do. Um, do we do something like this then? Is this how we defend? It feels like pawn... The fact that this pawn is not broken on file 8 might somehow... Oh! Okay. Yeah, actually... Yeah, can we do this? Are we safe here? Safe is some kind of relative term, because, <laughs> like, in some absolute sense, we're not anywhere near safe, but... Do we survive, is the question. Do we survive long enough to checkmate? Um, I don't know. Uh, Ghostone says... Instead of taking the second gold, he feels like taking the horse might have been appropriate. Oh, right. I completely forgot to analyze this. Right. During the game, this is what I was concerned about. Because now you have this rook and the bishop and the gold. Yes. Yes. I had planned this sort of thing. Um, Didn't know whether I wanted to drop... Well, I have to drop the gold to, like, have a real castle. So yeah, I wanted to do this. Um, and... Oh, the question becomes, what do they do with one tempo? They have one tempo to make their position whole or good enough. Meanwhile, I'm threatening a rook drop, but not really. Oh, I'm sorry. A male course idea looks compelling here. Um, although this... I mean, during the game, I was really confused about this. Okay, so now we play that. After they take the knight instead of taking the silver. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not sure. To me, I think I've given away too much material. I Like, that's such a lame excuse on my part, but... Um, yeah, I... The real test is going to be, does file 8 or file 9 break in a way that ruins this for me before I get an attack in? And my attack here is extraordinarily slow, so I think that somehow I haven't played this completely accurately here. I mean, yes, I'd love to take this token, but it costs me, like, multiple tempi to do that. I think better might be just running away. No, that doesn't help. I'm sorry. Running away from my problems does not help here. Just kidding. Uh, goodness, so I have to take this. And they have this fork. Um, this is a problem. This is a serious problem. I don't know if this helps me. But it threatens to, like, do a fork here. So... There might be something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Ghost Stone raises a good point, though. If he'd taken my horse, this would have been a really confusing game. Um, so I guess we could start... I don't know where we want to start. Take the, whor the silver first. As we might need that for the attack. And so I drop this up here. Um, I don't know. 
And then if this capture happens, then we recapture like this. And then they defend. Wait, now the hang on. They're not gonna invite me into their castle like that. That's too kind an invitation. Yeah, they would fight back like this. Um I would say no. And then they would come up with something so clever and it would make me cry. And I don't even know what it is. But this is the timing for it. <laughs> So where's the move that makes me cry here? Uh, I don't know. But this is the timing where, like, something absolutely terrible happens. Um, I don't see it. But it wouldn't be a surprise <laughs> if I saw it. So there's probably something here. I have no idea what it is. Hmm. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, there, there. That, we're on the right path. Yeah, okay. That threatens my gold and threatens my rook. Um, I feel like I would be obstinate and take this. And this is dangerous because my gold is hanging and my castle is not far behind that. Um, but this is kind of the way that I would play. Um, so do I get mated if I do this? Um, how badly do I get mated if I do that? So... No, we, that would be check over there, so we have to go this way. I don't know, man. Beats me. Suma or no Suma? That's the game we're playing. It's probably Suma. And then we got this, and go up. And then what? Um, another here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Suma! Alright. So. Um, that in turn means that I can't do this crazy rook move. Ah, <sighs> so that in turn means I probably can't just like, let the gold hang for no reason. Um, I don't know how to win a tempo here. Like, do I have to go back? Um, yeah, so if we exchange like this, they're going to drop a rook somewhere around this shape. Um, or gold. Oh, okay. Well, this is special. Meanwhile, this is still hanging here. Like, yeah, they're going for the throat. That's bold. Um, but no, they have it, so, like, they don't have to take my gold. Yeah. Uh, so. Meanwhile, I was thinking this, but there's probably still a rook drop or something here that, like, it's uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, Guston's comment was that taking the horse instead of taking gold number two might have been correct. And during the game, I thought, yeah, I expected you to take the horse or drop the rook onto a, um, um, just to continue your attack. Uh, so yeah, Melkor suggests this fun move. Yeah, I might take this gold first, but yeah, there's stuff to be had here. Um, is there some easier way out of this? Well, first of all, I suggested rook takes, but yeah, anyway. Um, well, now that hangs this gold. That defeats my tactic. So if I really want to, like, have my tactic work, I have to, like, 
Yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> but it'd be cool if it did. Alright, so, like, my rook fork fork idea is not good. Unless I'm going to, like, follow it up without actually playing the gold here and just, like, use my... Oh, if I try to escape this way, that's not great either. Um, I can't drop a pawn to trap the dragon. So this rook interference is not smart. So... Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a tough game if you take that. Yeah, it's a crazy game anyway. So, yeah, for the fans' sake, let's see how the game concluded. Or I took this pawn, figuring that this horse covering the head of my castle uh, would be good enough to save me until somehow I break through. Um, this pawn push is actually better than I gave it credit for during the game. During the game, I didn't think that there was time for this, but no, it's forced. Um, yeah, and this rook drop demonstrates that, like, definitely there's time for considering this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I uh, build up a shape here. Uh, right, now that seems like the right move. After I drop my rook all the way in Nowhereville, um, this rook exchange surprised me a little bit, but it was a crazy game here. Who knows how this could have gone. <sighs> yeah, actually this could be a fun position to, like, give to our harbor master. I ask, like, what does she think? Like, I built a castle that has a really solid wall, but, um, like, my position is weak in many other respects. And here, you have a two-general castle, plus two generals in hand, and I don't have any generals in hand, so, like, this seems like a difficult position to understand, no matter what the time situation is. <laughs> but in extreme time pressure... Yeah, this is not one you want to be uh, trying to figure out. Yeah, I like this idea. I was just thinking about this. Melkor suggests this pawn drop. I don't know. I'm not sure, Melkor. Uh, oh, okay, the idea is that there's some continuation here. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess so. This prevents other pieces from using the same entryway. They'd need to find a different entrance, and so, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, and then that's the threat. So I was thinking, like, maybe this drops all the way back here. And who knows at this point. Like, if you can successfully break through on these edge uh, ninth and 8th files, this game could be yours. Um, if your king can escape somehow, this game could be yours. If my rook ends up being completely useless back here, this could be your game. Okay, yeah, so I have to stop this gold drop next to the rook idea, and this is a good way to stop it. Um, what is going on here? So the silver starts to become more and more useful. It's working its way this way. Um, but I guess the knight's hanging now, so that's a thing. Oh, I guess maybe I even have this pin now. <laughs> oh, well, that's curious. I didn't see that. Yeah, okay, this game's complicated. Um... This game is so complicated. Um, but yeah, we got here by virtue of the rook promoting this way. Uh, and the rook promoting this way, I think, forced me to drop my rook into a place where I didn't want it to go. Uh, but the way this game continued was with the rook exchange. Yeah, you can't go here because of this horse. So, rook exchange, I guess, makes sense. Um, but somehow the thread was lost somewhere. 
I don't know exactly where, but yeah, around here I was still wondering, like, this rook can drop somewhere around here, I guess. This is hanging. I would have had to try to rebuild my castle either this way or that way, and I've got problems to deal with. Um, or I could drop a pawn, but then that doesn't last for... Well, the pawn drop's not terrible, is it? Because I still have this covering so many squares. Um, but yeah, the other thought is this immediately, before there's time for this. Um, okay, Melkor points out this drop. And then what if we see... Uh, this doesn't do anything, does it? Wait, no, this breaks the line that defends the knight. So... There could be tactics here. Uh, oh, Engine says take the Rook is better. Okay. Yeah, it's a sharp position. Engine is probably correct. Because, yeah, this attack is kind of scary. Somehow I thought it was possible for Gota to easily deal with this, but... Engine is probably right. So yeah, you're saying, yeah, take the rook, which is, I guess what we're looking at, and then this rook 2-8 to follow, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, I think you're right that this is best left to the engines to figure out. Oh, goodness. I saw this during the game. Yeah, take the gold and then take the knight. I forgot about that. So yeah, this is a good threat. Which, yeah... This needs to be dealt with earlier rather than later. And I guess to deal with it, you need to like play this earlier. Um, and yeah, anyway, an engine would do better at solving this than I'm solving it. That's for sure. Um, I don't blame you for bringing it out, because like, this is definitely a good occasion to use it. But yeah, uh, the way the game played out... We exchanged the rooks, and then you brought an attack on my king. And I brought an attack on your king. And this rook drop makes sense, but maybe the timing is ever so slightly off. The gold check, I think... Unless I've missed something, that didn't need to be played right away. Yes, I do have this threat. Um, but... Uh, but what? What is my point? I don't know. Somehow this is something something. And like if you can get the knight. I don't know. Maybe you can't get the knight. Maybe I'm just completely hallucinating here. Um, uh, who knows? Um, yeah, I could also... Okay, Gaston recommends... Um, well, let's see. I drop my pawn here, and then we're recommending this here. I could actually give him the hat back. Uh, he can drive, too. Um, yeah, so... At this point... Oh! Wait, but I don't escape, do I? Do I escape? Am I dead? Oh my goodness. Yeah, the pawn blocks this, doesn't it? Right. Okay, so that's variation one. Variation two. Probably some rook drop something. I don't know. They take here. Oh, that's cool. Like, during the game I was looking at this. Um... That's more effective than I thought. So, well, no, yeah, if I take that, then this follows. Um, it's not easy to... F wait, actually, yeah. What's wrong with this? I take the bishop. Um... It's the mate and one threat. So I guess we have to defend against the mate and one threat. Uh, 
Oh, but then they just like drop a knight or something, don't they? Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, my attempt to defend the mate while also making a mate threat is not so smart. Instead I have to do something like this and you know, I my attack runs out. That's sad. Yeah, this is a good point. Yeah, so my attack at this point is dead. Um because I failed to run the king early enough. And yeah, my king just gets destroyed here. So that's that sub variation. Um it's backing up a little bit. Um rather than taking the gold general. Is this a simple mate that I'm just missing? Perhaps so. I mean, yeah, I'm losing a silver if I play it this way, but is it a simple mate? Oh, wait. I, no, Rook Drop doesn't... Im does it? No. Rook Drop... Oh. Well, that's cool. How does this work? Anyway, yeah, this we're doing exactly the thing Hidechi said not to do. But we're doing it toward the end, so we've looked at the rest of the game first. We can still enjoy this. Um... um but yeah. <laughs> he says to improve, start by studying the rest of the game first. And we have. We did the analysis of the opening, some analysis there. We did some analysis of the middle game, and now we're doing the fun part. This is a, a very fun mess. Um, it's got me curious. I just don't understand how... It just feels like somehow I've got something here. And the engine's just going to die whatever I have. Um, um, yeah, those are the two candidates. I'm trying to pick one. But it's an interesting situation. Yeah, so I suspect that this might be better for Senta, but boy, I would not want to play this. <laughs> I would not have a choice, though. I got this far in the game, and, you know, if push came to shove, if you had taken my horse, we might have ended up here. And uh, with the 60-second Bioyomi, anything can happen. So, wow. What... A crazy, crazy happenstance or circumstance here. Yeah, this is exciting. I guess this is what happens when you both build something of a castle, uh, both break each other's castles, and it's just a question of who checkmates first. And this time I happen to get lucky, but who knows what happens next time. Yeah, thanks for a game, and thanks for a post-game analysis. And thanks, uh, Lily and Melkor and, yeah, Gaston for uh, helping with this post-game analysis together. I'm sure there's a lot more to analyze. I'm sure I'll try to think of some good questions to bring this to Shogi Sunday at the very end. And, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching.